I can feel my adrenaline going already. You need to know the reason that we're here. Todd and I have been invited to a private track day at Thunder Hill Raceway in Northern California to come drive spec racer Fords. If you're familiar with these, you know they've been around for a long time. We're out here with our friends Excel Race Tech, and this is what they do. They rent these out if you're newbies like us, and they also are the, the pit crew and the maintenance folks and even storage for guys that own these and run them. The thing is, because this is a spec race series, these exist. They exist cheaply. You can buy one for 10 or 15 grand or you buy a Series 2. They're on to Series 3 now. This is actually a Series 2. They're on to Series 3 now, and, uh, and those are running 25 or 30 grand at the most. But the truth is, it's all the same tech. You could take your Series 2 and upgrade it. I'm hoping you can hear me because this car is, is the loudest car I've been in on track. <laughs> oh, I'm giggling like an idiot already. <laughs> I've never driven a lap of Thunder Hill in my life. I did the sighting lap and that's it. All sunglasses are on the hood. He's going to miss those in a minute. There they go. I do not know this track. Greg knows the track. Let's chase him. He's the only other board out here today. Everything on the track is faster than we are. So this is about experiencing a race car. You know, as automotive journalists, we talk a lot about, well, this feels like a race car because that we're trying to get across the fact that a car feels really designed for the racetrack. But this is a car that's only for the racetrack. So much visceral stuff. Where do I begin? Just over 100 horsepower in the engine. And it is quick. It sticks so well. I haven't even begun to explore the limits of this car. Paul and I are very different drivers, like we're different in a lot of things. I start pretty slow on a racetrack. I ease my way in a lot, and hopefully over time I get faster. Paul has a tendency to start with a lot more boldness than I do. This is a 100 horsepower engine out of the old Ford Escort. What a great thing to reuse Ford Escorts. It's pull the engine out of them and stick them in a tiny, custom-built, beautiful race car. The reason this car is so beautiful is because how light it is and how hard it grips. You can get a third generation that has a more powerful engine in it, but this one, 1,300 pounds. This has got a five-speed manual. Test your heel toe. Heel towing in this is perfect. Pedals are super close together. It's like racing a Lotus without having a Lotus. Todd and I are having this discussion about lightweight cars with just decent horsepower, not just monstrously high horsepower cars. Because you think higher horsepower equates to higher lap times, when in fact it doesn't. There's always going to be a Miata that is faster than some high horsepower car around the track. This is one of those cars that is fast enough to explore limits, but still slow enough that you're not afraid. I love being in a car where you can be full throttle almost all the time. Of course, that's what you're supposed to do in a race car, right? You want to get your full throttle out of it. When you have a car that's not crazy powerful, that's a lot more likely. You know, we keep all getting so excited about cars with seven, eight, nine hundred horsepower, you just can't use that. I've got a hundred horsepower here, and the truth is, I'm not even a good enough driver yet to use everything that's here. But I'm having lots of opportunities on track to floor it. And that feels really refreshing to really push the car and push myself, because I do have everything pegged. The turn-in is astounding. Of course it's unassisted, and it's very, very heavy. But what I'm amazed by this car is the braking power. It's not assisted, and it's not that it's so strong, but it's that we're on slick tires, and I've got such a light car. Oh, I can turn hard, I can turn harder. Carried more speed to that corner. So this is what a race car feels like. To be honest with you, this feels related to my Lotus. It really does. Steering is great. All analog. It's the most direct car that I've ever felt. Todd's Lotus 
is quick and nimble. This car is astounding. I keep thinking about the driving dynamics that we're searching for. No car can be compared to this. It really can. Up into the bypass of turn five, which is blind, but not nearly as bad as it is when they have it open normally. This is the newbie setup, but I'm okay with that. Break at the top of the hill, off camber. You might be in the weeds if you feel really bold. <laughs> All right, off camber three. I'm not that fond of this corner for that reason. Holy shit, and I saved it. Oh, and I grabbed the screen because I ran out of steering wheel. But anyway, she came back though. That's the good news. I did what I'm supposed to do and it came right back. Oh yeah, a little bit. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, once the car settles, it's fine through turn three, but you got to get it settled first. That's the only thing. Got to get it settled. All right, in third, turn three, hate turn three. There's the settle. That's better. That's better. A little bit of slide for fun that time. All right, I got to fix my line. My line is terrible. And this long back section here at Thunder Hill, indeed, you can go flat out, like that. Unbelievable, the car just sticks. I gotta trust the grip, I'm not trusting the grip enough. I got slicks, I don't weigh much, I got plenty of grip. Come on, flat out. Yep, it just can. All right, trust the grip, Todd, trust the grip. Trust the grip, there, that's a little better. There's more there, there's lots more there. Trust the car, trust the tires. Woohoo! Woohoo! Apparently it'll hold this. I'm not nearly ballsy enough, but I'm trying. Yeah, it'll hold it. It'll hold it. I need to stay through there. This is my favorite part of the track. Flat. Flat. Yes! The nice thing about this track is there's nowhere to go if you screw it up. Nothing to hit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I gotta trust it more. There's a lot more there. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Holy <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> well, there you go. Proud of myself for pushing, but did a bit of off-roading. There you go. This car needs a better driver than me. I am not a race driver. This much is clear. Come on, little girl. Holy crap. That was floorboarded. I did it. Oh, this is such the car to chase. Time's in. I'd almost rather be doing it in this car than anything else. Porsche what? I want more of this. Oh, I want more of this. It's nice to be able to get to a point, a relationship with a car where you can start dialing in your corners and start really knowing the tires so well that this is all you're hunting. There's a series that has been going on for decades, the Spec Racer Board series, that you can come do. You can come do this. get better in a car like this so this is clearly not a normal day for us but what I like about this is the fact that this is accessible honestly I mean it you could come here without really much experience now they do have a three-day race school we're talking about maybe showing you guys that we'll see where that goes but ultimately I mean this is a car you can get in and the idea of having a 10 
to a thirty thousand dollar dedicated track car that really is a track car that's almost real people money i mean i realize we aren't just all going to run out and spend 30 grand on a track car but 10 for a dedicated track car and you can run an actual spec race series i know you could do spec miata for the same or cheaper but these things hold their value because they are only one thing i'm in love with this track i'm in love with spec racer fords i'm grinning like an idiot I'm addicted to private track days now. So awesome. So awesome. Oh my gosh, I could do this all day long. It feels like I could beat on it indefinitely and just keep giving it tires and fuel and let it run. And that's the genius of this. It's just designed to be run. It's designed to be raced. That feels like a pretty low cost of entry, even for just a rental day. Talk to Bruce at Excel Race Tech. Just give it a shot. It may not be something you end up doing, but it's such a different life experience as a driver. I think you love it. I think you should do it. That's the end of the day. Nothing like driving until they close the circuit down, huh? like it. As we go around here, we'll have a little scenic tour real quick. I'll talk you through. Uh, straight ahead, on the left, you see Paul's sunglasses. <laughs> Since 2007, Everyday Driver has been finding great cars and experiences for real people. Now, we're delivering more content to more places than ever before. Our TV show premieres on the Motor Trend Cable Channel and can also be found on Amazon Prime. Plus, older episodes are available worldwide on Pluto TV and Vimeo. Our top 10 podcast, The Car Debate, takes your questions and helps you find the perfect car. Whole garages and even a few marriages have improved over 500 episodes, with new ones dropping every Tuesday and Friday. On YouTube, we cover cars of all kinds, from exotics to haulers and even hybrids while Nate reviews motorcycles. Plus, we've got five feature films, including unique retrospectives of the 911, the M3, and the Corvette. And if that's not enough, we host meetups, live podcasts, and even driving trips to Europe. So thanks for watching, listening, and supporting what we do.